Today I have a pretty interesting NAS enclosure. This is the Jonesball N2 that I reviewed previously, video up here. This mystery one is sold by a few vendors on AliExpress. It holds one more drive, so it's a six bay NAS. Standard ITX motherboard. It uses a flex ATX power supply instead of a standard ATX, or in this case, SFX power supply. I think the design on this newer one is much better. I also feel like I got completely ripped off at the same time, which is kind of funny. I'll go into that in a minute. It's got a much cleaner look, I think. I mean, that's obviously subjective. It's got nice indicator lights at the bottom. It also is hot swappable like this one. They use a backplane on this one as well. It has what I think is a better cooling arrangement. I don't want to say it's perfect, but I think it's better than the single 120 millimeter fan to cool five hard drives on this one, especially where stock it's a very thin fan and it's just not capable of really keeping up with it. By screwing the fan onto the case, I was able to put a 25 millimeter fan on the John's Bell. So I think that helps its cooling. This one uses dual 92 millimeter fans to cool the hard drives which I don't really want to see 92 millimeter fans at all. When one fan is cooling three drives, that's not too bad. And it actually gets pretty decent performance. There's also two 80 millimeter fans that cool the motherboard section. It's more vertically oriented. So as long as you have the height, the footprint is about the same. This is more rectangular, whereas this one's more square. I think the overall volume of this one is probably a little bit smaller, but it's kind of hard to say. They're about the same size. With this one to get into the drives, you simply pull off the magnetic front cover. Included with this enclosure are these plastic fan grills and they're really horrible. They're really restrictive and you just don't need them. And they also put this material all over the front. This whole entire front section was covered. I don't think you need that. I ripped it all off. It's already a relatively tight grill. You know, I'll catch cat fur and stuff, barely catch any dust and it'll restrict airflow by a lot. So I don't think it's worth it at all. You can see the 80 millimeter fans that are used for cooling the motherboard area. There's just power switch with a little light inside, a single USB 3 in case you need to hook up like a flash drive or something. And green LEDs for power and yellow LEDs for activity. You get one for each drive, so there's a big array of them. The drives are attached on metal sleds, which are also screwed in in two places. So they're actually quite stable, which is good because I need to transport this on a flight to uh, my dad's place for remote backup. So I kind of need it to survive the trip. You can just pull out the drives. They're on a really just generic chunk of metal. The slots do accept SAS drives or SATA. I have a whole bunch of uh, 14 terabyte drives in this. Right now, they're a mix of Western Digital and Seagate. With the outside panel off, we can see just how much stuff I've crammed in here. This power supply is from that Datto system that I tore down a long time ago. It's made another appearance. Motherboard is an AM4 platform with a 5650G. I think, or maybe it's the GE. I can't remember which one. Either way, it's their, one of their pro APUs. You need a pro APU if you want ECC memory. Obviously you can put any motherboard you want in this. There's plenty of older motherboards that you can just throw in. It's just a standard ITX board. This kind of makes it a bit cramped because the board only takes four drives. So you need some form of uh, additional controller. I have a standard LSI HBA in here because I'm going to be running TrueNAS. I've actually super glued a little knock to a 40 millimeter fan to it because there wasn't enough clearance to use like a proper 3D printed mount for it. But the low profile knock to a cooler I'm using, which was in the uh, John's Bow build, I just moved the thing over to this. All this fits pretty well. And the, the motherboard area definitely is not overheating with these two 80 millimeter fans. You don't even have to run them that high. There's a decent amount of space down here for wire management. And even running the HBA cables wasn't too bad. If I tilt it over, you can see the fan arrangement. It has barely any clearance. There's air coming from the 80 millimeter fans, but I feel like it just needs a little bit of movement on these controller cards, no matter what. I've got a little five-way splitter for the fans stuck down. The controller and the two fans running on the hard drives are all linked to the same port, so they can all rev up together. Moving to the other side, we can start to see the back plane. Connectors on the back plane are arranged in a way that if you use a 90 degree adapter, it points down and it's just 
routing the wiring is just quite difficult that way. You might be able to get away with it using the thinner HBA cables instead of like standard SATA cables, but I tried running regular SATA cables, like the thick cables. They were just like impossible to run. I don't really recommend trying that without these adapters because they do make ones that are 90 degrees. Well, they're like 180 degrees, so they go this way. Each backplane uses a Molex power connector. You have to use ones that are fairly low profile. So this is actually an adapter even though the power supply came with Molex connectors, the connectors are too big. So I have to use this particular splitter just to get the smaller size, which is really annoying. What are you gonna do? All these case manufacturers seem to do stupid things like this. Got two Noctua 90 millimeter fans in the back with no protection or anything, no grills other than what's on the back, which is just a, a really basic opening. And I think there's enough airflow to keep these drives cool. They stay under 40 degrees and even kind of a warm room. Overall, I think the design of this case is quite good. I mean, you know, I would like if there was a little bit more room here but like I said, pretty much all case manufacturers do stupid things like this. The issue I have with this case, it's only available from two suppliers, from what I can tell, on AliExpress, and they're both ridiculously expensive. It's about 180 bucks. Honestly, for a six bay NAS enclosure with backplanes, I don't think is terrible. The issue is that they charge like $150 shipping on that. It's absolutely ludicrous. There's no way in hell it's worth that much. I bought it because I want to make a video out of it and, you know, I'm going to use it. Whatever. Maybe I'll make my money back with Google income. I doubt it. But, you know, there's always hope. What infuriates me is that after I bought this, before they shipped it, I realized that there was another item that was listed as a complete NAS, meaning power supply, fans, motherboard, cables, all that stuff, no drives. And it was like $380 or $350 with free shipping. So it was basically you either get the empty case or you get a complete NAS. For the same price. Now at the 350, I honestly don't think it's a bad deal. I think 350 for a six bay NAS with a basic motherboard that I'll show you in a minute. Cause you know what? I bought the motherboard too for an extra hundred something dollars just so I could show it here and you can see what it comes with because I've was able to track down like the parts and stuff. From what I can tell, they've raised the prices on AliExpress to like $450 for the complete unit, which again, I don't think is worth it. That's just too much money. The, you can buy it from the original manufacturer. It's CWWK. They make the motherboards and they also sell this particular unit. I'll put links and stuff in the description. Keep in mind that when you buy it pre-built, it's going to have like a generic power supply. Like it won't be a brand name one. The fans will probably be... Eh. Hopefully the all the cabling is like custom cabling, so it actually routes properly. That I don't know. I couldn't find any details on it. As for the motherboard, you can find the motherboard you just look for j6413 or 12 that's the processor that they use it's a celeron processor i think it's 10th or 11th generation and they make these boards that are designed for nasa's and from everything i can tell this is what's going to come if you buy the pre-built one it's actually a pretty good board i you know for a kind of generic nas board made in china I actually do like it. It takes SODIMs, which is kind of annoying. It does have two NVMe slots. I think they're both limited to 1X, which isn't a big deal, but if you're trying to run VMs off it, it may affect you, or caching. Does it really matter in a system like this? It's only got four cores, four threads. Probably not. You're probably looking for more just budget, and it's not a really concern over like massive performance. Even for a budget system, this does actually have some pretty cool features. It uses standard ATX, power supply it has six sata connectors although five of them are provided by a j micron controller it's not on board i think only one of them is actually supplied by the onboard chipset which is not ideal i tried it out in true nas seemed to work fine it has two internal usb 2.0 connectors which aren't fast but you can put two boot flash drives in there if you really want to and mirror it i don't recommend using flash sticks for boot drives if you're going for a real budget build 
by all means. As for external ports, it's got onboard video, USB 2 and 3, three 2.5 gigabit ports, and I think this port is either one gigabit or it might be another 2.5 gigabit, but either way, you have multiple uh, 2.5 gig ethernet ports. It even has a PCI Express slot, a 1X one, and they've actually, it's kind of hard to tell on this, but they've actually arranged it so you can put a longer card in and still use it. So if you want just the functionality and not the bandwidth, you can get away with putting a longer card in here and it will work. I will say they have these pin headers really close to it. So you'll probably want to tape off the card connector so that it doesn't contact any of these pins. There's only one fan header on the board, which is kind of annoying. Other than that, it's a, it's a pretty good board. I have 32 gigs of uh, DDR4 3200 RAM in it. Does not support ECC, which is annoying. What are you going to do? All these uh, N series and J series, they, they don't, I don't think any of them support ECC at all. You can get boards that are based on the N series CPUs. I think the N5000 series, they are a bit faster. They're also, I think they're a bit older, so it's kind of a trade-off. Personally, I think this is perfectly fine unless you're trying to run VMs and you need more than four threads, four cores, four threads. If you're buying a, a really basic NAS motherboard and this happens to come in it, what's funny is that I really realized this whole NAS thing where you could get the pre-built one after I had bought it. And I contacted the seller and said, hey, can you cancel my order? And I didn't tell them why, but I was like, hey, can you cancel my order? And they're like, oh no, it shipped. You know, they, they waited like a week and didn't ship anything. And the second I asked to cancel it, they're like, oh no, we, we, we sent it. It's already been sent. So they give me a tracking number and it's like not even in the system. <laughs> and they're claiming they sent it off to another courier and bought blah, 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 blah. But I didn't really want to argue too much. I just waited for the thing to come. I figured it'd be funny that you could hear my story of how I paid 300 and some odd dollars for a little NAS case and then an extra hundred dollars for a motherboard I basically don't need as opposed to just buying the complete NAS. I mean, chances are I was going to pull this NAS motherboard out. I am going to be linking the two systems via OpenVPN and I figured a little bit more processing grunt won't hurt anything because uh, I think my dad got up to uh, a one gig connection now so <laughs> he can actually send stuff to me at an appropriate speed since filming i took the case up to canada and it's been running ever since no problems whatsoever if you can get the case for an appropriate price it's pretty good now that the john's bow n3 is out i don't think it's worth getting this case over that because it's cheaper it's easier to get and it's eight drives instead of six and it also has more standard power supply it uses the sfx type instead of the flex atx which are harder to get to and usually louder and more expensive overall i do like the case i just think at the price point it's not worth it if you could get the nas version the motherboard and everything for 300 bucks or something i think that's fine i don't think i'd pay 450 for it i'd rather just buy my own motherboard in a case at that point could spend 150 bucks on a motherboard and like a low power one and uh john's bow for like 175 or something and you'll be ready to buy a lot of expensive hard drives